Welcome to Big Shots, an exclusive interview series where we interview the top minds in business, arts, culture, politics. Hi everyone, I'm Giselle Fernandez. Welcome to our second season of Big Shots 2014. We're looking for straight talk from these thought leaders. We want to know where we're headed in this fine city, this expanding metropolis that's called Los Angeles, so we have a better understanding of what we face in LA and the world today. At the end of each Big Shots episode, I hope you say, hmm, very interesting. Welcome to Big Shots. Today's Big Shot is one of the most powerful leaders in Washington, one of the most powerful Latinos. He's been in office more than two decades. He is on the Powerful Ways and Means Committee, and he is the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Caucus. Javier Becerra, thank you for spending time on Big Shots today. Thanks, Giselle. You're out of the deep freeze. <laughs> yeah. L.A. We should move the capital to L.A. I wasn't talking about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> we could do something about that as well. Have you ever experienced anything like this past year? No. So. Nor do I want to experience it again. <laughs> but, but, but I'm in this, and i got to do it regardless of what it looks like. Just like when you tell a soldier, go take that hill. The soldier doesn't have a choice about what the hill looks like. you got to take that hill. What's your biggest frustration in trying to lead? Getting things done. Something like immigration reform. We've never been this close to getting it done. In the House, we know we have the votes to pass it, but we can't convince the Republican majority to let us even have a vote. So what does that mean? We're not going to get it passed this oh, time? I still, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. Because at the end of the day, you can't, you can't be so far behind the people. I think you're going to see us get there. It's just how quickly. Meanwhile, every day, you probably find about 1,000 people who are being separated from their families because they're being deported. Why is the racism conversation so avoided in Washington? Let me disagree with you a bit, Giselle. I don't think it's so much racism. It's change. It's something different, not knowing what's around the corner. Everyone feels more comfortable with what they've known, what you grew up with. Immigration has taken America around the corner, and a lot of folks aren't ready to turn the corner. I don't think it's partisan anymore to say that there's such a great hypocrisy going on, that we you know, kind of look the other way and allow these people to come in and pick our fruits for prices that mo Americans didn't want to take those jobs for. And we then you know, look the other way when they had kids here, but we don't take any responsibility in creating the mess. I know where you want me to go. And I, I, I don't think anyone would deny that there's probably a class of Americans that is concerned about immigration reform for the reasons you've articulated. The point I'm trying to make is this they're in the vast minority. That's not what's holding us up. It's the, the bigger chunk of America that doesn't understand immigration the way you do, who doesn't have the life experience with immigration the way you or I do. As a Latino, do you feel like you know, an extra burden and responsibility to voice our concerns there and get them to understand what our experience has been? I say it as an American, uh, and I say it as the son of a, an immigrant who couldn't walk into a restaurant when he was a young man because of the sign that said no dogs or Mexicans allowed. So I feel it. I carry my skin with me. But as an American, I, I want folks to understand that this isn't an issue for me because of my skin. It's an issue for me because I'm an American. I need to, I need to see my country move forward. In Los Angeles and California and states like us, you know, how would you characterize where we are? We are the future of this country. Where California goes, so goes the country. Where LA goes, so goes California. And so we're the future. Remember, it wasn't more than 20 years ago that in California, by six, close to 60%, this state passed an initiative to deny undocumented immigrants, including children, any services, including school. 20 years ago. Where are we today? We've got a speaker who's Latino in the state assembly. We're going to have a future majority leader in the US state senate who will be Latino. In a matter of one generation, we've gone from looking back to my father and my mother to now two daughters at Stanford University and parents, my parents, in this photograph who got to meet the President of the United States. One generation. That's big. I'll tell you what I'm doing. As a member of Congress, I have to do things to make sure that everyone's kids have a chance, like my daughters, to do well. I think it's time for this country to reward work again. The productivity of Americans today is greater than it's been. Yet, all the wealth that that productivity creates is going to the very, very few up at the very top. We and have a disparity of wealth that has a 50-year high. And it's certainly growing. Yeah, it's getting worse. No peso, no say-so. <laughs> That's true. So what are the implications of that? 
that you can work hard all your life and never reach the middle class. What we need to, let's, let's boil it down to this. November 2014 will be very important. But if America votes in November 2014 and re-elects a lot of the same crowd, it's a prescription for the same dysfunction we see. It's like two decades, you've gone through several you know, different commanders and chiefs. What's different about the way President Obama deals with his relationship with all of you? I've never seen a president reach out as much as this president to those who have said, I don't agree with you, to try to see if he can get together to, to reach a common ground. He was just rejected. Uh, the door was closed on him. And that's, that's made it very difficult for him to make progress with the Congress. The president was just in Mexico talking with Canada. Do you see us having a stronger NAFTA and a stronger relationship moving forward with Mexico-U.S. trade? I think we're going to have a stronger relationship with Mexico. The new trade agreement that's being discussed now is a pan-Pacific trade agreement. This is an opportunity to try to make the North American Free Trade Agreement better. Are we bullish on it? I wouldn't say we're bullish. We have to get, uh, gain this recognition that trade is good if it's good for business and workers and consumers because we are still the market. Mm -hmm. And if we've done it the way to make it work, then our businesses are going to rock it. Los Angeles, you represent downtown. Tell me what you see is its future. The beautiful thing about LA is it, it's young. It, we're, think about the future of our country, about the future of our state. You got to think LA. What's your favorite place to come to when you come home? Is there a favorite restaurant? Uh, the, the little hole in the wall restaurants where you can just get the best food. You get some phenomenal Korean barbecue just, just down the street. I can take you to some of the littlest restaurants where you can get some, you, you taste the Mexican food and you feel like, wow. Okay, my last question is leadership. You've been a really low key leader despite your power. How would you define leadership today? I'm an introvert uh, at heart. Uh, I was very fortunate to get elected because <laughs> I now look at things and I wonder how I was able to get elected because I, I'm not the kind of guy that attends a party and all of a sudden has all the attention on him. Um, but I love to immerse myself in the You're work. You're a deep thinker and a worker. I, I dive into the stuff. I love, I love policy. I love to discuss how we move things forward. I mention my parents so much because they influence everything I do. When, when, when I've been asked, what is it that you'd like to say you've done? I always tell folks, if I've helped folks like my parents, I've done something good. Congressman, I appreciate you letting me ask you some tough and passionate questions. So thank you so we should do, much. We should do this more often. Thank I, you. I so appreciate you spending the time. And good luck back there in the big freeze. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Stay warm. Thank you for joining us with Congressman Javier Becerra. We'll be back next time on BigShotsInLAMagazine.com.